Okay, for our last example of counting in two ways, um, we'll do something a little different. It doesn't have dots so much um, as uh, divisors. So the problem that we're going to approach now is we want to show that the average number of divisors of 1 up to n is approximately log n. So this is a very nice number theoretic fact. Let's just do examples. Again, I really love to start with examples to make sure that the problem is clear, the statement is clear, and just to get some intuition for maybe why it might be true. So we'll write down what are the divisors of 1. Well, there's 1. Pretty boring. 2. We've got 1 and 2. 3. We've got 1 and 3. 4. Finally, something interesting happens. We've got 1, 2, and 4. 5 is back to boring. 6 is pretty fun. Um, 7. Uh, well, actually, maybe we'll stop at 6. Just so we don't keep listing forever. So now let's count the number of divisors. Well, there's one divisor here. And there's 2, 2, 3, 2, and 4. So when we say the average number of divisors, we're taking the average of these numbers. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to compare the number 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 4 divided by 6. Right, so that's 14 divided by 6, which is 2.3. And we're going to compare that with the natural log of 6. And throwing that on a computer, it's about 1.8. And so the statement is that these two numbers are roughly the same. Just to give you um, and maybe some more data, if we take um, the average number of divisors, usually a bar denotes average, so we'll just maybe call it like this, um, say div of 100. So we can compute this, and um, this is roughly 4.82. And we can compare that to the natural log of 100, which is 4.605. So maybe we'll say 4.61. And we can see these numbers do appear to be getting closer together. So there's some evidence that this might be true. And we want to think about it by doing some clever counting in two ways. So first of all, what are we going to count? We're going to be counting divisors. And it might at first seem like there's not a good way to count this in two ways. So we want to think of balls and boxes, and um, one way to do this is to count things with arrays. Uh, matrices come up a lot in combinatorics, and very rarely do we actually think of them in terms of matrices that you had in 225. Okay, usually we just want to think about them as tables that keep some data for us. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make an array. It's going to be an n by n array. So again, you can think of this as a matrix if you want. Um, and I'm going to define my entries a, i, j. It's going to be 1 if i divides j and 0 otherwise. Okay, so based on this data that we have um, that we just computed here, I can go ahead and make my 6 by 6 array. So we'll go ahead and maybe write these um, numbers up. And I'll put my i's here. And I can make this as big as I want, of course. Um, here, 1 is a divisor of everybody. Um, and then I had this guy. And then, uh, let's see, 4 went down like that. 5 went down like that. And 6, we hit the 3, and then we hit nothing else to the 6. And then we all have zeros down here. Okay? So that, that's just an example of how I could look at this array. Right? And I'm going to count all of the entries in the array, which basically is counting how many are ones, right? And I'm going to do it in two ways. There are two natural ways to count the entries of a matrix. One is to count rows and then get your row sums and then add those up. And the other is to count columns and, and then add those subtotals up. So those are the two natural ways to count a matrix. So let's go and do that. Um, let's first count... Uh, by columns. So let's take, for example, this column here and think about what does it mean to count by columns. And I'm going to I'm going to scale by 1 over n, remember, because I'm doing that, um, I want to do the average number, so that's what I'm doing. So here, the way that I'm counting by columns is I'm going to take the outer sum is going to be from j equals 1 to n, and then the inner sum, i equals 1 to n of a i j. So here I'm counting columns first. 
So what is this equal to? Well, this is one over n times the sum from j equals one to n. Well, what are these, if I'm, if I'm saying add up the i's here, remember, we get a one if i divides j. So what am I counting when I do this inner sum? This is just the number of divisors of j. And I add that up for all j and divide by n. So by definition, <laughs> this is the average number of divisors of 1, 2, all the way up to n. That's the thing that we want to count. And so when you're counting in two ways, if one side is the thing you wanted to count, that's great. The other side will be your answer, your formula. OK? So let's switch colors and switch how we count. Now what I want to do is I want to think about counting the rows and adding those up first. So let's do that. Count by rows. And now what do we notice here? Like look at the, the row of twos. Every second entry is a one, the threes. Every third entry is a one. And in general, um, in row i, every ith entry is a one and the others are zero. That tells us how to count them. Oh. So we take one over n times the sum from i equals one to n. So you see I've switched how I'm doing my summation. We know that we can do that on a finite sum. And that's exactly the key. So here what I'm doing is I'm counting these guys. Okay, and so what is that? Well, it's basically for the third row, it's every third entry. But we do need to be a little bit careful. Um, sorry, i equals one to n of, it's actually gonna be the floor of n divided by i, right? So, I mean, of course, here we, we ended up getting two of those because six is divisible by three. But if you look at the fourth row, we take four divided by six, um, and we're just gonna get one of, or six divided by four, and we just get one of them, not two, because we didn't hit eight, so we didn't get the second one. But that's okay, because remember, um, we're trying to do an approximation here, and herein lies the approximation, and here is where our error is gonna be. So what is this? This is roughly equal to one over n, the sum from i equals one to n of n over i, without the floor. So the floor function means I'm gonna lose some data, but that's okay. It's approximately this nice function n over i. Now here we have the n's and the, the n is not a, the summation here, so we can factor that n out. So this is just the sum from i equals one to n of one over i. So what's that? Well, just do, Riemann sums, right? You're adding up the area under the curve of one over x. That's approximately equal to its integral. So log of n. So in fact, we do have, ah, uh, ah. We have that the average number of divisors is approximately equal to log of n. Just by counting this matrix, the entries in this matrix in two ways.